Uh, hello everyone, this is uh, Chris back again with the uh, Ancient Scholar. Today I'd like to talk about, or right now I'd like to talk about uh, the gas laws and we'll try to, I'm going to try to finish the gas laws up today if I can and have both of these videos up for you guys. So uh, the next video in line on gas laws is going to be over Henry's Law. This is probably going to be part one of, a, of a, at least a two or three part series on Henry's Law. I want to get this first part out because this is really the, the intuition as to what the gas law actually explains. So again, it's going to be more of a qualitative assessment of the gas law versus a quantitative assessment. So what Henry's Law says is, well let's go ahead and just get into the intuition of it first. And what I always like to think is, with Henry's Law, I always think, think Henry's Heineken, like a Heineken, a, a bottle of beer. And I'm going to go ahead and just draw <coughs> the intuition here. If you can imagine, this is a bottle of beer, or alcohol, or spirits, or maybe even some soda, uh, what have you. Now, within that bottle, uh, we have a liquid. And we can assume that dissolved in that liquid, or, or within that liquid, I have carbon dioxide in its gaseous, gaseous, gaseous state. So CO2 in, in the gas state, its gas phase. Now, there's a certain pressure, we'll call P1, inside of this bottle. And I'm going to go ahead and put a cap on that bottle, or a cork in it, and I'm going to separate the system inside of here from the system outside here in the atmosphere. And we know that the atmosphere also has a pressure, and we'll call that P2. Okay, so what do you suppose is going to happen when I take the cap, or the cork, off or out of the bottle? Well, the intuition is, and the intuition is actually correct, that the carbon dioxide gas that's dissolved um, in this, this bottle that has a certain pressure is going to be, uh, again, effusing or moving out into the atmosphere. And so the natural question is, uh, why is it going to do that? We know that there's some diffusion from high uh, concentration to low concentration. A and really what Henry's Law describes is not necessarily the concentration, even though that's a part of it, but Henry's Law describes the pressure. And what it says is, look, the pressure of a gas dissolved within a liquid is directly proportional to the pressure of the gas around that liquid. So what I mean by that is that there is a pressure of carbon dioxide gas inside of this bottle. and the pressure of that gas is higher than the pressure of that gas out here in the atmosphere. Okay. So when I take the when I take the cork out of the bottle, or I open the, the the beer or soda up, that pressure that dissolved uh, the pressure of that gas um, it, it cannot maintain that same pressure, right? Because we, we want to have equilibrium occur. A lot, lots of things, as we know in nature, tend to shift toward equilibrium, and this just happens to be one of them. So the pressure, the, the gas that's dissolved in here will move out of the bottle into the atmosphere to equalize um, that pressure. However, just so we, we make sure that the intuition is correct here, or that you guys have the intuition, let's say that I now take that same bottle, maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's a, a can now, it's a can, maybe it's a can of soda, and I put it in a chamber, and I seal that chamber off, and I have uh, CO2 gas in this chamber, and the gas is at a P pressure 1, but the gas, the pressure of the gas is now equal to P2, the pressure of the gas inside of this bottle here. I'll go ahead and open it up. What's the intuition now? And the intuition is correct that I can now have that dissolved pressure. Whatever it is, let's say it's 100. Let's say it's 100. 100 units of pressure here, 
and 100 units of pressure here, I can have that 100 units of pressure. Obviously, there's a liquid air liquid interface there. I can have pretty much. It's not going to be exact, but I can pretty much have the same pressure outside as I can inside. There's, not exactly, but for now, pretty much. Now, what happens as I start decreasing the pressure out here? Maybe I make it 80 or 70 or 60. Well, I can no longer have this 100 in here if this, this bottle is open, right? If it's 80 out here, there's a difference. There's a big difference. Then I'm going to lose gas through there. So the pressure dissolved within this liquid here depends on the pressure of the gas around it. And that's all that Henry's Law says. So where does this become important? Well, it becomes important in a couple of different uh, applications in, in medicine, respiratory therapy. Uh, I, I think one of the, the first applications, uh, a very important application, is, is going to be um, diving. Uh, maybe scuba diving, maybe uh, deep sea diving, uh, like a technical uh, technical diving, oil rigs, welding, things like that, where you're going underwater and there's a certain pressure around you as you go underwater, because we know every 33, approximately every 33 feet of water adds another atmosphere of pressure around us. So the gas that we have to breathe when we're diving underwater has to, to be about at the same pressure as the gas around us. So there is a high pressure of a high pressure of gas dissolved in our bodies, you know, specifically of uh, things like oxygen, nitrogen, even helium, if you talk about deeping, uh, di diving um, uh, deeper. Now, if I come to the surface very rapidly, if I'm underwater here, and there's a P, uh, pressure P1, we know that that pressure is going to be higher than the pressure P2 here out in the atmosphere. And uh, so if I go to the surface very quickly, that gas that was dissolved at this high pressure will no longer be able to dissolve in my body because there's an air liquid interface in my body and that gas is going to want to leave and obviously there will be Boyle's Law, there will be bubble formation, the gas will try to get away and that will lead to the bends, that will lead to decompression sickness. Now another place where Henry's Law becomes important is in hyperbaric medicine. If I take you and I put you in a chamber a hyperbaric chamber, maybe this is a little little monoplace chamber here, excuse my art, it's, it's not all that great. So I have a little guy in a monoplace chamber and I increase the pressure of oxygen in that chamber. Well, what will that do to the amount of oxygen, uh, the pressure of oxygen, the partial pressure of oxygen that, that can be, be uh, dissolved in my blood? Well, it's going to increase the PA, little a, O2, the partial pressure of oxygen in blood. And I'll actually do um, uh, some videos on formulae about oxygen transport and something known as the PA, big AO2, the arter um, arterial air equation, and the CaO2, the content of arterial oxygen. And we'll find out that normally the pressure of oxygen dissolved in our body doesn't really make a huge difference um, as far as total amount of oxygen transported because we have hemoglobin. But if I put somebody in a hyperbaric chamber, increase, substantially increase the partial pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere around them, I will be able to dissolve substantially more oxygen in the blood. And that's one of the, um, the, the basis of hyperbaric medicine. Okay, guys, so hopefully that makes a, a little bit of sense and, and hopefully got something out of that. Thank you.